there's nothing behind me and all the treasures I used to love they've all faded from view there's a new day ahead for me and all my heartache is Good morning, and welcome to the Word at Lakeside Church of God, our live stream Facebook service. We're so glad you're here. Our person so excited to be back in Texas, and we're so excited that you're here joining us. If you have any prayer requests, feel free to comment those on the page, and we'll pray with you. If it's more of a personal subject that you're not comfortable sharing with everybody, uh, feel free to post on uh, our page. We will pray with you. Glad you're here. We're glad to get to worship with you. Uh, it's a little different, but that's okay. Let's pray, and then let's... Uh, Father God, thank you so much for everything you do. God, thank you for being who you are. God, I pray that this morning in our service, God, that we feel your presence. God, we already feel your presence. God, we pray that your will is done. God, we pray that life change happens. Father, we thank you so much for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Do you believe that you're going to see a victory this morning? Go ahead and worship and sing with us.
right now, God, and come straight into wherever we're watching from, Lord. God, we just ask that you just continue, God, to remind us of your promises, to remind us that your promise will always stand, because great is your faithfulness. We praise your name, God.
longer slaves to fear. Uh, you know, that's been one of the big challenges of this season that we're living in is having to deal with just the unknown, uh, a virus that we can't see, but we see the effects of it. Uh, and, and just everything that's happening in our society right now, uh, gas falling, gas prices falling, the oil industry being hurt, our economy seems to be in trouble. And everywhere you look, it seems like there's fear. Uh, but I'm so thankful this morning that we serve the perfect love, the perfect one that can cast out all fear, our Father God. And we know him and we love him through his son, Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful for you. I love you. I wish that we were together today. It's so strange not being able to see you. Uh, and I actually uh, tried to make sure I combed my hair and put on a jacket. So since you were going to be looking at me for a minute, I, uh, I wanted to be presentable to you because I love you so much. It's so good to uh, also have Rob and Hannah back home with us. Uh, today's 35 days since we had a live service in our sanctuary. Um, and, and of course, they got stuck. Uh, they were on vacation. They had gone out to uh, see their family and to show off their baby. And they got stuck out there, but they made it home safely this week. And uh, it is so good to have them back, uh, back home with us here in Texas again. Uh, we're going to give you an opportunity to worship the Lord this morning. Those of you that want to and can, uh, that want to worship Him with giving, uh, you can go uh, to our website, www.thewordatlakeside.com. There's a giving tab at the top of that website. Or you can go to, uh, through all of this, we've created another avenue for you where you can go to bit, B-I-T dot Lee, L-Y, slash the word giving. Uh, or, uh, of course, you can always uh, mail your giving to the uh, church, and, uh, and we'll take care of that for you. Um, you know, this past week, uh, many of us, our home included, received the stimulus check from the government. And, uh, and so uh, first thing Kelly and I did is we paid our tithe, and, uh, and then we also placed an offering into the church. Now, here's some good news for you today. Um, several families have actually donated their entire stimulus check uh, to the church. Uh, they said that they had more than enough, and they wanted to make sure that not only did the church keep broadcasting, but they also uh, wanted us to be able to help families in our church that are in need. So if you're a part of our church family and you have a need, please know your brothers and sisters are looking out for you. And, uh, and so uh, I, I can't promise that we can meet every need, but we'll meet as many of them as we can. And if you let us know about what you're going through, we'll, uh, we'll not only pray for you, but we'll try to help serve you because we love you and we're all in this thing together. Uh, this week I had a, a very wealthy businessman from the South Lake area contact me. He doesn't go to church here. But uh, he's concerned about our area, and he actually owns the building that McAllister's is in uh, right here in Lake Worth. And uh, so I'll just let you know that I'm meeting him tomorrow, and he is donating multiple gift certificates to McAllister's. He wants to help that business out, but he's giving them uh, to run through our church to help families in need. And, uh, and I thought that was an amazing thing uh, on behalf of one of our, our local citizens and our community that they want to uh, partner with the church and to help families that are struggling, families that are in need. Finally, before we uh, pray this morning, uh, we, I've got a couple of uh, things that came to me in the mail this week that were just so awesome, and I wanted to share them with you. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, these came from uh, Teresa uh, Atkins from her children, Judah and Kaya. And I don't know uh, if you can see those very well. I'm, I'm actually going to walk towards the camera for just a minute and, uh, and because I want you to see this artwork. Is that good? Awesome. If you look in the middle of this first one, Judah drew this first one. Uh, 
I don't know if you could recognize that, but I knew immediately what it was. That is the logo of our church that, uh, that Judah has drawn on this piece of art for me. Judah, that is a treasured piece of art. I'm going to hold on to that. And then Kaya, uh, she did this one for us, and it simply says, we love because he first loved us. Now, Kaya also included something else. Kaya put an offering inside of that envelope with that artwork, and Kaya, I'm going to put your offering into the church offering, and we're going to uh, make sure that your offering goes to not only worship the Lord, but to also help people in our community. We love you so much, and uh, we're so proud of you kids, proud of our whole church family. Let's pray together, and then in just a few minutes, uh, just a few moments, a, a friend of mine, we've, uh, we've served on a board together here in the state of Texas through the Church of God, and, uh, and I've known of his ministry for a really long time, uh, and he lives not too far from here, but Brian and Krista Rayburn are here with us today. They have pastored, uh, in the state of Texas, they've pastored two fantastic churches, uh, one in Bonham, where my Aunt Linda attends, and then uh, they also pastored uh, one in Longview, and now they're uh, serving as evangelist, and, uh, and he's here today with a word for not only our church, but for anyone that hears this today, anyone in our community. It is so good to have Brian and Crystal with us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to pray over your offerings. We've been seeing your needs go in the, uh, in the Sunday school scroll and in the, uh, in the worship service uh, Facebook scroll as well. We're praying over those needs. And, uh, and then just also wanted to remind you that at 2 o'clock today, we'll have our kids at the Word service with Pastor Katie Pearson. We'll be praying over the needs during that service too. So feel free to put those uh, prayer needs in the comments. We're going to pray over you pray over the offering, and, uh, and then in just a moment, you're going to see my good friend, uh, Brian Rayburn, as he comes to bring the word. Father, we thank you again so much for this opportunity to be in your house, Lord, and, and, uh, and that you not only are we in your house, you're in all of our houses. You're in every one of our homes this morning. That's amazing. God, you are there in the living rooms, the, everywhere families are gathered, and, uh, and watching the service this morning. You are there, and you're here, and we're so thankful that you're not confined to, uh, to one location but God, you're everywhere with us, everywhere we're at. Father, we pray, Lord, for our family members today. Lord, we had some this week that were laid off. God, we, we have some this week that have gone through some very difficult challenges. Lord, we've got some this week that have been sick and are recovering, some that have even been recovering from coronavirus. And God, so we pray for a healing touch in, in their bodies and in their homes today, Lord. God, we pray, Lord, that you would just reach down and that you would breathe the breath of life, the Holy Spirit, into every one of your children this morning, that you would refresh us, renew us, re remind us, encourage us, Lord. And God, stir us, Father, to not just be in a church service, but to actually be the church, to be the church today, just like this fine gentleman in our community that wants to reach out and serve, just like Kaya and Judah. Lord, help us just to be the church, just to share your good news, your love with everyone we come in contact with. God, we ask that you would bless the, the finances of the church so that we could just keep doing what you've called us to do. But God, uh, we know that, that whatever comes our way, Lord, you will be glorified. You will be magnified, and we're going to talk about you, Lord, because we love you. And you're, you're all we need. Father, we thank you for everything. We thank you for the word that we're about to hear. God, I pray that you would go before the messenger this morning. And God, that you would uh, help eliminate distraction. And God, that you would just, just touch him as he shares your word with us today. And that you would continue to keep he and his family safe and healthy and whole. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you guys so much. We're going to transition real quick. And uh, y'all, please, from your houses, uh, make some noise. Help me welcome my friend, Brian Rayburn. Man, so good to be with you today at the Word at Lakeside and uh, be able to share what uh, God is doing in our midst. And we're just so thankful for the opportunity today to be able to uh, be with you wherever you may be watching today. And uh, even my granddaughter, Kinsley, is watching uh, today at home. So where if you're watching today or you'll be watching in the future, we're just thankful that the presence of God is able to meet us right where we are. No matter whether we're gathered together in a sanctuary or we're in our homes, uh, we're in cars, wherever we are, we have that assurance that, we're, that He is with us, that He dwells within us and lives in us, and that He is with us regardless of our circumstances or situations. I just want to say, just take a minute and say that I appreciate the ministry of this church and the impact that it is having in this community. This church has a great history, and uh, we're so thankful for all that it's done throughout the years. But I appreciate Pastor Brandon and Kelly and all the staff and the impact that they are having uh, 
locally and globally and the work that they are doing and the commitment that they have made in serving the Lord and serving you and the body of Christ and reaching out. And so many great and wonderful testimonies are coming out of this ministry and we thank God for it. We thank God for you. And I just want to encourage you uh, today and throughout this week, make sure that you blow up your pastor's phone. I just, I just challenge you to do it. Blow up his phone. Let him know, hey, thank you, pastor, for making sure that we are staying connected and you are providing service opportunities for us and giving us opportunity to hear music and worship and be a part of the praise and worship and also hear the word because it takes it takes a lot of effort and these uncharted waters that uh, churches are experiencing today they are doing a fantastic job in making sure that we are staying connected and uh, we believe that hopefully soon that we'll be able to uh, gather together together again and we're just believing for great things well I've come this morning to share the word of the Lord with you and uh, there's one verse of scripture that I want to share, and it's found in Psalm 140, and it's verse 7. One, one verse of Scripture, and I just want to share uh, these principles and truths from this word. And the psalmist says, O Lord, the God of my strength, my salvation, you have covered my head in the day of battle. You have covered my head in the day of battle. And that's what I want to share with you just for a few moments this morning as we think together about this thought, covering your head in the day of battle. You know, these are what we would consider um, uncertain times. Many are uncertain about what the future looks like, uncertain about their jobs, uncertain about their income, uncertain about school, uncertain about life. What, what is life going to be like in the next few weeks, in the next few months, in the, in the next years? Is There are so many uncertainties that, that we face even concerning the present situation that we are facing. And yet so many people face uncertainties about their health, they face uncertainties about uh, situations in their family and relationships. And these uncertainties can weigh us down. They have a, an ability to overwhelm us. Sometimes we're uncertain about, about what we're going to do. What, what's, what's it going to be like when there is a returning back to, uh, back to jobs, back to restaurants, back to whatever normalcy there may be? But we have this confidence in the midst of uncertainties, whatever the uncertainties may be in your life. We have confidence and comfort in knowing that, first of all, God is in control. He's sovereign and that he is in charge of our lives. So we, we have this confidence even in the midst of whatever uncertainties we may be facing in life that God is with us. He is for us. And if God's for us, who can be against us? And so in the midst of, of all all of the confusion and the chaos and the crisis that you may be going through, your family or your friends or your neighbors or, or our nation or the world, we have confidence as believers in knowing that God is working all things together for our good. In fact, the Bible says he's the author and the finisher. So God is at work. He hasn't abandoned us in this time. He is present. He is working and doing great things. I love, I love the passage of scripture that Paul writes in, in Philippians and he says he says being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it God will complete it he will bring it to pass and we so we have confidence in God knowing that he is in the midst of our situations and our struggles but in the midst of this we understand that there is there is an attack that comes to our minds there's an attack that comes to our thought process. There's an attack that comes to create doubt, to create uh, discouragement or despair, because we do have an adversary. The, Paul writes and tells us very clearly, and Peter writes, and others write in the scriptures and tell us about our adversary. Jesus said, the thief comes, but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. Peter writes and said, says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So we understand that we have an adversary that targets Targets our mind. Most of the battles that we face in life as believers, we fight with our mind. We fight in our mind. The battles consist of our thoughts. 
In fact, uh, there, are, there are some physical battles. We have a lot of uh, physical battles, that uh, military-type battles that we can relate to. And even in Scripture, all the wars uh, in the Old Testament especially that are examples for us of physical battles that have application into our spiritual life. I read recently the story of a man by the name of Leroy Elms. He was a Marine in World War II. And they had uh, stormed uh, the beach in South France. And uh, they were in an amphibious tank. And after they had uh, reached the beach, they had come under great artillery fire. And the, the, the shells had struck the amphibious tank. And they had to evacuate the tank. And as they evacuated the tank, they're looking for holes and, and trees to hide in. Because there was a constant, continual artillery that was coming. And so, uh, the, they're... they're trying to get cover and protection. And the sergeant uh, of this platoon had was looking for his men and checking on them to see how they were doing and faring and, and making sure they were okay. And the sergeant had hopped in the hole with, with uh, this Marine, Elms. And he said, how you doing, Elms? And he said, I'm fine, Sarge. And the, the sarge, sergeant looked at him and said, uh, where's your duty belt? The duty belt is what carried his ammunition and his uh, bayonet and his canteen. And he, he went to look for it and he said, I must have left it in the tank, Sarge. He said, well, where's your rifle? And he looked around and he said, uh, I must have left it in the tank, Sarge. And he said, Elms, where's your helmet? And he put his hand on top of his head and he said, oh, I must have left that too in the tank. And he said, here I am in the midst of war in the battle and he said, I'm dressed like I'm going to the beach. I've left all of the necessary components to protect me. I left it in the tank. Sometimes that's how we face life as believers. Sometimes we forget that Paul says we're to put on the armor of God. We're to put on the whole armor of God. And one of the aspects and pieces of the armor that is important, Paul said, put on the helmet of salvation. That helmet was important. I borrowed this, uh, this helmet as, a, as an illustration this morning because there's another story that takes place just a few years ago during the Afghanistan, Afghanistan War. October 4th, 2012, uh, there was a military soldier by the name of Lewis, Thelmas Lewis. He was walking through a village in East Afghanistan and he came under enemy fire. And bullets were blazing around him, and one struck his head, and it knocked him off the side of the road and, and into, into, the, into the ditch. And uh, he began to search around his body. His, his ears were ringing. His head was aching and pounding. And uh, he began to wonder, what, what's happened to me? Am I okay? And the medics came and took him and took him to the medical tent. And while he was in the tent, they checked him out and finally told him, Soldier, you're okay. You're going to live. You're going to survive this. And he said, well, what happened to me? He said, well, you were struck in the head by a bullet. And he reached up to his head to feel if there was any bandages or, or any wounds on his, on his head. And the doctor said, son, you're fine. He said, uh, you struck, a bullet struck you, but it hit your, it hit your ACH, your advanced combat, combat helmet. And he said, that helmet that I oftentimes didn't want to carry and oftentimes didn't want to put on, but because of my training, I knew I had to put my helmet on because my, that helmet was one day going to save my life. And this was his response. He looked at it in amazement and said, wow, that thing really works. I want to tell you this morning that we have to protect our heads. Our head represents so many aspects of our life. In fact, our head represents our ability to reason. It represents our ability to function, to think. It represents our self-worth, our identity. We don't know our own identity without our head, our brain that is, that is inside of this skull that we have, of this human body. 
this three-pound organ that God created has the ability to process 600,000 pieces of information every day. Sometimes you may wonder, man, you feel like your head hurts because there's so much going on and, and you're so tired. That's because you have processed, by the end of the day, the average person has processed over 600 pieces of information. The head, the brain inside the skull has the ability to think, to reason, to, to make decision. And, and it causes the entire body to function. That's what makes it our central processing unit of our entire body. So it's so important. It's how we learn. It's how we, it's how we grow and develop. Our brain is so important. We call it the mind. Our mind being able to function and to think and to retain information. And the body Bible lets us know that the mind is important. In fact, the Bible mentions several things about the mind. We can have a a reprobate mind. We can have a doubtful mind. We can have a mind that is uh, that is controlled by by lust and other things that the Bible mentions. And so it's important that we have, as Paul said, a renewed mind. It's important that we renew our mind because the battles that we face in life happen in our mind, in our thought process. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, 7, that as a man thinks, so is he. And so we understand that a thought is powerful. A thought can create a dream and cause a dream to come true. It begins with a thought. All great things begin with a simple thought. All buildings began with a thought. All inventions in life, conveniences, modern conveniences that we, we enjoy that help us throughout our day, all began with a thought. So all good things begin with a thought, but so do all evil deeds. And so it's important that we understand the power of our mind and the power of our thoughts and have a mind that is God-controlled because a thought produces words, and words produce actions, and actions produce habits, and habits produce character. But it all begins with a thought, so it's important that we take control of our thought, and we understand the thought process, and we understand that our thoughts need to be sanctified, and our thoughts need to be, our mind and head needs to be have a spiritual covering because of all the voices, and all the, the the negativity and all the influences and images that come against us every day. It's no wonder that the psalmist cried out, cover my head in the day of battle. Well, let me tell you something. Every day we have battles. Every day we're battling the thought process that we are engaged in. We have to choose which thoughts we dwell on. We have to choose which thoughts we choose to believe and which thoughts we choose to reject. It is a daily ongoing process that the Bible says is actually part of the war that we are engaged in, this spiritual conflict, because the enemy will target your mind. In fact, some of you, the enemy may have been targeting your mind even in the last few weeks about what am I going to do? How am I going to make it? Am I going to get sick? Is my family going to get sick? And you've been worried and stressed out or, or even just the ordinary life, even before we ever knew what COVID-19 was, uh, you were engaged in a spiritual battle every day of your life. And we have to guard our thoughts. In fact, there are times that we become vulnerable if we don't guard our thought process. I remember in reading the story, the incredible story that we love so much in the Old Testament uh, about Israel and the Philistines when the Philistines and the Is Israelites had encamped against war one another. And the giant, the Goliath, who stood on one side of the mountain was defying the gods of Israel. And Saul and the soldiers of Israel were intimidated. He was using words to intimidate them. It intimidated their thought process. They were afraid to go out and engage battle. And here comes a young shepherd boy whom his father had sent, Jesse had sent David uh, to check on his brothers uh, who were supposed to be engaged in battle, de defeating the Philistines, the enemy of God and the enemy of God's people. 
But when David showed up, what did he find was that they were cowering and afraid. And he heard the intimidating, bullying words that were coming from this giant Goliath. When David went and engaged Goliath, he saw that there was a place on his skull, a place on his forehead that was open. Goliath had an armor bearer. He had one who had a shield. Goliath in his, in his giant size and his, and his booming voice had a place that was vulnerable. And David took that stone in his sling and slung it and he aimed it right at the place at Goliath's head and it brought him down. You see, just as David saw that there was a vulnerable place in Goliath's head, the enemy seeks and finds vulnerable places in our lives that he can attack us, that he can come against us. He uses fear. He uses discouragement. Some become depressed and and have strongholds of of thought patterns in their life that bring them into bondage and bind them and cause them not to be able to walk in the freedom that God has given to us. So many are bound in their thought process in their life and and they're unable to experience the full potential that God has for them often because of the thought processes. In 2 Kings chapter 4, there's another incredible story. The story in the life of Elisha and the miracles that Elisha performed. There was a family that Elisha encountered. There was a man and a woman. The Bible says a Shunammite woman. They were, they had, she was unable to have children. And Elisha encountered them and prayed for her that she would have a child and the time came she had a child the child was born it grew and and they were enjoying this child that was a a blessing to them and a blessing from God but the Bible says that the child had gotten older one day he was out in the field at the time of harvest with his father and and others who were who were gathering the harvest now the Bible doesn't tell us the child's name so Let's call him Potential this morning. So Potential was out in the field gathering the harvest with his father. When all of a sudden he had a head injury. Something happened to his head and he grabbed his head and began to say, My head, my head. And they carried the boy to his mother. And the story tells us that eventually that child, that boy died. But the mother knowing that this child being a gift from God, she went and laid him upon the bed. They had created a room in their home. They had made a chamber, the Bible says, uh, with a bed and a table and a chair so that the prophet Elisha, whenever he was traveling, if he needed a place to rest, if he needed a, uh, was in the area, needed, needed a more like a bed and breakfast for the prophet, they had created a place. Well, Elisha represented the anointing and the Spirit of God. So they had created a place in their home home for the anointing they had created a place and they had welcomed the anointing into their home they had welcomed the 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 work of the holy spirit as elisha represented in the old testament into their home and this woman knew this mother knew that that the anointing would make a difference in this child's life though he had died but she took the body of her child and she went and laid him upon the prophet's bed And they called for the prophet and he came. And he came into their home. And the Bible said he did something unusual. We don't read about it in any other instance in the scriptures. But Elisha went and laid upon the child. Face to face. Hand to hand. Palm to palm. And he stretched himself out upon the child. And the Bible says that that as the anointing that was upon Elisha touched that child. The child began awoke and began to sneeze, and he sneezed seven times. Seven is the number of completion. Seven means complete. And so what we believe and what the interpretation of this passage is, is that when he sneezed a complete number of times, he was was sneezing out and getting rid of whatever the virus or whatever the irritant was that was in the child that caused his head to hemorrhage or caused a seizure to happen that caused the child to die. You see, the anointing touched him. 
The anointing made a difference in his life. The anointing, the revelation, the word, the spirit that, that was in Elisha, that Elisha represented, it affected that child. It, it brought potential back to life. You see, the enemy is after our potential. The enemy, when you are doing what you have been called to do for the Lord, when you are striving and giving yourself to the kingdom of God and you're part of the harvest and reaping a harvest for God. The enemy wants to hinder us, hinder the church, hinder believers, hinder those that are striving to do what God has called them to do. He wants to hinder our potential and keep us from reaching the harvest. But you see God's anointing and God's word and God's favor upon our lives, that covering of the word of God, the word of God in us uh, is greater. Greater is he that is in us uh, than he that is in the world. And the word of God that is in you this morning uh, let me just tell you that word of God that is alive and active and powerful that lives in you has the ability to keep you. To keep what you have committed to the Lord uh, to grow you. You see we become saved in a moment. Salvation comes when we confess with our mouth. We believe in our heart that God raised Jesus Jesus from the dead and that Jesus loves us and he died for us. So salvation can come instantaneously, but discipleship is a process. And discipleship is taking the word of God and getting the word of God in us. How, do, how does faith come? The Bible says faith comes by hearing the word of God. That's why we preach the word of God. That's why we teach the word of God. That's why we meditate on the word of God. And we dwell on the word of God because the word of God is what produces discipleship and transformation in our lives. That's why Paul writes in Romans 12 and 2, and he says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds, that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Well, how can I have a healthy mind? How can I have a spiritual mind? I'm glad that you asked, because I want to give you three quick practical principles this morning that we can apply to our lives so that we can have a mind that is alert, a mind that is sound. The Bible says God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Now, why don't you just touch your family member over there in your home right where you're watching and say, you can have a sound mind this morning, and here's how we can do it. First of all, we have to feed our minds the right things. We have to feed our minds. How do you feed your mind? Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, he said, Man can't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Father. What Jesus was saying is, I'm the bread of life. My word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. Jesus is the bread of life. This is his word. In fact, even the Old Testament, a few of the prophets, God told them to eat the scroll. To Ezekiel, he said, eat the scroll, and you will prophesy my word. Jeremiah said, I found your word, and I ate the word, and it became joy to me, and refreshing to my spirit. Now the Lord isn't telling us to rip off the pages uh, out of our Bibles uh, and to take a fork and knife and cut them up and eat them. No. But what he is saying is that we are to ingest his word. We are to take his word in. You know we eat uh, several meals a day. They say eat three good healthy meals a day. Well I've seen some diets where they say eat five or six meals a day. You know, so there's all kinds of information about how much we should eat on a daily basis for our own physical well-being and our own uh, physical health. But you know, we'll eat every day. We'll eat meals and food. But sometimes as believers, we only snack once a week on the Word of God. We only get a snack through the preaching of the word. We only get a snack through somebody's teaching. We only get a little snack, and we only snack once a week. If we're only snacking physically once a week, we're not going to be healthy. We're not going to have healthy minds. We're not going to have healthy bodies. Our bodies are going to deteriorate. Well, how can we have a spiritually strong mind and be good disciples of the Lord if we are not taking in the Word of God? So we have to feed our minds 
the right thoughts. We have to feed our thoughts the Word of God. God's Word is powerful. And if we'll feed on God's Word, the psalmist, Psalm 119, which is, which is a, a terrific, long passage of Scripture, many verses in Psalm 119, but so many truths. He, over and over, David writes, how I love your law. I delighted in your law. Your law, your commands, your Word. What's he talking about? He's talking about the revelation of God's Word. The law, the Word, the commandment, the words of the Lord. He said, I delight in your word, O God. It's health to me. Psalm 19, 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You see, when we take in the word of God, when we hear the word, when we read the word of God, the word of God, we either hide it in our hearts So that we don't sin against God. So that we have the ammunition that we need to combat the enemy. That's what Jesus did when he was tempted in the wilderness. When he was fasting and praying. The Bible said the enemy came and tempted. And he twisted the word. He took partial truth. Because that's how the enemy works. He takes partial truth and twists it. But Jesus came back. And he quoted the word of God. And the enemy has to flee. I'm telling you this morning. If you will take the word of God, if you will confess the word of God, if you will read the word of God, if you will hide the word, if you will feed on the word of God, you will be strong and can do exploits for God. You will know who you are because that's how we find out who we are in Christ, by the word. What does God's word say? What does it say about us? Who does it say we are? It's from the revelation of God's word that we know that we are heirs with God and joint heirs with Jesus. It's through the revelation of God's word that we know that we are the loved of the Lord, that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. It's through the revelation of his word that we know that we can be healed. We can ask for healing. We can apply the healing that Jesus shed on the cross for our own physical needs. It's through the word of God that we can ask and have our needs met according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That comes through the knowledge of God's word. So feed your mind the word of God. That's how you'll have a healthy mind. Secondly, not only do we need to feed our mind with the truth of God's word, but we need to free our mind from destructive thoughts. Just as there are good thoughts... Just as there are pure thoughts and holy thoughts, there are destructive thoughts. And those destructive thoughts do damage. They damage self-worth. They damage self-esteem. They damage how people see themselves, how believers see themselves or don't see themselves because of the destructive thoughts. So often when Paul says that we are not to be conformed by this world but be transformed by the renewing of our mind... You see, when we become a believer, though our spirit and our soul, our spirit man is is saved, it's redeemed, our flesh has to be brought into submission. We have to crucify the flesh. It is a process. It is a daily process. Paul says we are to crucify the flesh daily. Daily, we are to take up the cross and follow him. And part of that daily process is renewing our mind, reprogramming how we think, reprogramming the thoughts that we allow in our minds because then that affects the words that we speak and it affects the actions that we take and the habits that we form and then the behavior or the conduct that we have. It begins with the thought process, realigning our thoughts, renewing, reorienting how we think. That's transforming our mind. In John chapter 5, there's the man that was at the pool, Bethesda. And he complained that he couldn't get in and get his healing when the waters were stirred because someone else was always getting there first. When Jesus showed up, Jesus asked him, do you want to be made whole? The man said, well, I do, but there's nobody here to help me. See, he had a mentality of, of, of not being able to get to the healing because there was nobody to help him. He didn't see that Jesus was standing right there in front of him offering wholeness, offering the healing. And that's often what happens as believers because we don't think the thoughts that God wants us to think. We don't think 
based on the Word of God. And we don't see all that He has, all that He's prepared, all that He's already given to us. Everything that we need pertaining to life and godliness has already been provided in Jesus Christ. Everything that we need for success, everything that we need to accomplish what He wants us to accomplish has already been provided. But we have to retrain our minds. We have to learn to rethink the thoughts that God wants us to think. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. He's the truth. He's the way. He's the life. So not only do we have to take those destructive thoughts and reprogram our mind, because Satan wants to, he wants to control our mind. The flesh wants to contaminate our mind. The enemy wants to capture our minds. But the Word of God lets us know that Jesus wants us to conquer them. Amen. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10, excuse me, 3 and 4 and 5, he said, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, the casting down of imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity... Every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's how we win. When we capture those thoughts. We can't always control the thoughts that come in. But we can control what we do with them. I heard someone say this a long time ago. Don't allow the enemy to build a nest in your mind. Meaning don't, don't allow him to rent space. Too many are allowing the enemy to rent space in their mind. And that's where the fear, the worry, the doubt, the anxiety, the depression... Cast it out. Cast down those imaginations. Think the thoughts of God. And that's the third thing. And the last thing this morning. Is that not only do we feed our mind the truth. Not only do we free our mind from destructive thoughts. But we focus on the right things. What are you focusing on? Are you focusing on all the, the news feeds? I got to where I just had to turn it off. Folks, I got to where I just had to not sit for hours and hours and... Watch the news because most of it's negative. Most of it isn't uplifting and encouraging. And when we just constantly allow ourselves to be fed with negativity and things that are discouraging and depressing, we're going to find that that's how we're going to feel and that's how we're going to act. So we have to focus on right things. What can I focus on? What should I focus on? We'll begin with Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Focus on His love for you today. Focus on His power. Focus on His thoughts. Jeremiah 29, 11. We love this passage of Scripture. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of good and not evil. Thoughts of a future and expected end. Peace, He says. Future, a hope. He thinks those thoughts about us. And if he thinks those thoughts about us, we need to be thinking on him. We need to be thinking on his grace. We need to be thinking on his love. Wrap your mind this morning. Wrap it in the love and the grace and the peace of the Lord. Focus on Jesus. Revelation 1.10. John on the Isle of Patmos. Can you imagine being abandoned on an isle, isolated? I mean, we, we're... Some of you are experiencing isolation like we've never experienced before. But John was banished to an island to be killed because of the word of the Lord. But in his isolation, this is what he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. How did he get in the spirit? On, how did he get in the spirit in isolation? How did he get in the spirit in the midst of, of the threats and, and the accusations and, and all that was going on. His mind could have gone so many places and fear and rejection and loneliness. But he got in the spirit. He got in the spirit in the midst of that. Why? Because he thought about Jesus. He thought about the goodness of the Lord. And when he began to think and dwell on Jesus, Jesus showed up. He showed up to him. He, he revealed himself to him. He said, I am the first and the last. I'm the beginning and the end. And God revealed himself to John on the Isle of Patmos. And the Lord can reveal himself to you when you think. Not, not only think on Jesus, but think on others. Think about others. Not only are you going through something, but there's others around us. 
that may be going through something even more severe, something more difficult. There's always somebody who's in a worse shape than we are. And the Bible lets us know we need to be thinking about others, not just about our own needs, not just about our own crisis, not just about our own pains and afflictions, but think about others. Focus on others as well. Give unto others. Do for others. Reach out to somebody else because when you reach out in the name of the Lord, when you're reaching out and being a blessing to somebody, whether it's encouragement or sending uh, money to help right now or to whatever you can find to do for somebody else, God will bless you and your mind will be clear of the confusion and the chaos that it's going through. Not only think on Jesus, not only think on others, but think on eternity. This is a good time to be thinking about the future. This is a good time to be thinking about this world is not our home. This world is not the last place that we're going to be. This world is not it. All that's going on, and we know by reading the scripture that it's going to get worse one day, that things are going to happen, things are going to escalate at some time in the future, and we are to be thinking about eternity. That's why Jesus said in John 14 and 1, he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. You see, I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. Here and in the future, think about beyond. Think about beyond this week. Think about beyond this month. Think about in the future. Think about where you're headed. Think about where your thoughts are taking you. Think about the direction of your life and where it's going. If you're watching today and you haven't asked Jesus into your heart, the the direction of your thoughts will take you in your destination. If you're not thinking about Jesus, you haven't thought about him, if you haven't thought about asking Christ into your life and becoming your Lord and Savior, then there's a future without him. But if you'll turn your thoughts this morning to Jesus and ask him to come into your life and repent of your sins and confess that he is Lord and Savior and invite him into your life, then you will begin the journey that is glorious and wonderful a life of salvation and a life of deliverance and a life of peace and joy. doesn't mean there's no conflict. doesn't mean there's no struggle. But you have the promise of Jesus and you have the promise of heaven. And it's by choosing today. Make the choice. Maybe you're watching today and you've got sickness in your body. You're dealing with discouragement. Maybe there's someone that's watching and you're dealing with depression. I invite you right now just to lay your hand on yourself. Lay your hand. We can't physically be with you right now and anoint you with oil and pray the prayer of faith and physically touch you, but you can touch yourself. And we're going to pray with you. I'm going to pray and ask the Lord to bring deliverance and bring healing into your life. Maybe you're just, maybe you're just confused. There's confusion in your mind. I just ask you to take your hands and lay your hands on your head as I pray in just a moment. And ask the Lord to bring clarity to your thoughts and and rebuke that fear and rebuke that discouragement that's rising up within you. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we thank you for the power of your word and the truth of your word, that you are present with us, that there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Lord, if there's someone right now that is believing for salvation in their life, they've lived a life apart from you, but you have sought them out. In the Holy Spirit, you are convicting them and bringing them to a place of repentance as they repent right now of their sin and they pray, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I admit that I'm a sinner, that I need salvation. And I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that Jesus died on the cross and that he rose again the third day just as he promised. And I receive him into my life. And from this moment on, I will begin to walk in a new direction. I will begin to become a follower of Jesus Christ. The old is gone. The new has come. So I thank you for those that would pray that prayer with us right now and believe. And we claim that their lives 
are met with the peace and the presence of God. And that they will experience the joy of salvation. For those that have sickness in their bodies. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that is in their room. In their hotel room. That is in their home. That is in the living room or the bedroom or the kitchen. Wherever they may be watching this right now. And the presence of God would come into that room right where they are. And bring a peace to their mind. Settle their chaos. In the midst of this crisis, bring peace. For you promised to bring perfect peace whose minds are stayed on you. For those that are experiencing depression, I pray right now, Lord, that that spirit would be bound. We bind the spirit of depression that's in someone's life and mind. And I pray freedom. I pray that they would be loosed from that spirit of depression and they would be set free to think the thoughts of God, to think the good thoughts, to think the pure thoughts. Paul said, think on these things, things that are true and lovely and just and pure and virtuous. If there be any virtue and be any praise, think on these things. So thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the power of your word that is in us, transforming us, renewing us, giving us hope and a future. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. It's been a privilege to be able to share the word of the Lord with you today. And uh, we just ask the blessings of God be upon you and with you. Grace and peace be on you. Be blessed. And as a, as a reminder and as an announcement, remember at 2 o'clock, uh, there is a Facebook service for children's ministry. God bless you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. This is how I fight my battles 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 Yeah, man.